Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be using Docker to create our Postgres SQL database and we're also going to set up PG Admin so we can make sure that we can connect to that database, we can create a table or select some information from the database. The first thing we want to do is to create a new folder and we can call this folder whatever you want. I'm just going to call the folder um, My Postgres. So if I just rename this, I'll call it My Postgres. After you've got your folder, you want to open it up in some sort of IDE or code editor. So to do that, I'm just going to open mine up in Visual Studio. So I'm just going to say code space dot and then this opens uh, it up in Visual Studio for me. You can do the same if you want, but again, if you want to use a different IDE, you're free to do so. So I'll just close down out of that make this full screen so you can see it and what we want to do now is we want to go and create a docker compose file so to do this you can go here and just create a little new file or you could go and open up a new terminal and create the file that way I'm going to do it that way just because we're going to need to use a terminal when we bring up our docker compose file so I'm just going to say touch to create our new file the name of our file which will be docker-compose and then we want to add the file extension YAML. So YML, we hit enter, and you can see that we've got a docker compose.yaml file here. So if we double click on this, we need to go and add in our configuration here. So what we should do now is, I've actually done this before. So I've got a git repo that you guys can go to, and you can just copy the code that I done straight from there. So this is the name of the, the repo. So I'll leave this link in the description. So all you have to do is click on that link and it'll bring you to this page. And then if you go and click on the second file, there's two files. One of the files is just a picture. It's a screenshot of the database information you'll need to log in. And the second one is the YAML file. So if you just click on this YAML file and copy all this code here, and then go back into your code editor, and paste this into your own docker compose file so i'm just gonna bring this down a little bit and we want to just look at the configuration for a second so we can see we're using version 3.4 this has to be in all docker files it just uh, lets docker know what type of version you want to use then as far as services we are going to be using two today so this block of code here is all related to creating your Postgres database. So if you just wanted a Postgres database and you didn't want a PG admin for the configuration or operation side of it, you were just going to connect this database to a web application or something, you'd only need this piece of code here. We're going to use both today and the same goes if you wanted the PG admin bit but you already had Postgres already on your machine, you'd delete this first bit. But anyway, we're just going to leave all this as it is for the minute. You can go and change it around in the future if you want. So for example, if you wanted to change the username from admin to your own name or you wanted to create a stronger password rather than using admin1234. But this is okay because all this is going to be run on our machine locally today. So simple passwords are all fine. And the next thing we want to go and look at briefly is this default email and password that we're using. So we're using this PG admin 4 and I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to need this in a minute. And then we're going to need to remember this password as well. This password is just admin1234. Easy to remember. And then we also have this port number here as well. So this port number is 5050. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our web browser. We're going to type in localhost colon 5050. And then we hit enter. It might take a couple of seconds. And then it's going to load up the screen for us to log into and then that will be the PG admin login so we'll have to enter in this and this password and then we'll connect to our database but before we can do that we need to actually create this so to go and bring this up and get this configuration to actually run we need to go back to our terminal and we're going to say docker hyphen compose and then we're going to hit a space and then we're going to have up and then we hit enter on this it's going to start uh, creating our pg admin and also going to start working with our postgres database so we're just going to go back to our web browser so i've typed in localhost colon 5050 i'm going to hit enter see the way it's loading here this might take a 
few seconds to maybe a minute and then after this loads because what's happening is if we look back at our configuration here it's still going and creating it for us so you can see I think that looks good now I think that's done so if we go back to our web browser now yeah you can see that we've got this page here so now we want to go and put in the email or username and password so as I was saying before this is the email we're going to be using this is the password so we need to put that in here once you've put that in hit login and then again you can see it loading so now we're actually in the PG admin dashboard but what we need to do now is we need to go and log into our database that we've created right so to do this just go up to servers and right click and then hit server and then we want to name this and we can name this anything we want so I could actually call this anything but since this is a YouTube video with using PG admin I'm just going to call it YouTube video PG admin so once you've decided on your name the next thing you want to do is go to connection and then you want to put in your host so if we just switch back to this here we scroll up this is all the information we've got to do with our database so our host is going to be this Postgres SQL database so if we just copy that put that in here the port is correct because this is the default port the database is called Postgres here but that's not the right name so we need to go back here and we want to select our name which is just product DB and then we're going to put that in there and let me see the username is also incorrect so we want to go back here and check our username so it's admin so I'm going to paste that in there as far as the password this is our password admin1234 and we put that in there and this looks good now so if we go and hit save you can see that we've saved our credentials so it's just telling us here that this is not a great password it's, it's commonly been used and it's been part of a data breach again this would be a problem if it was in like production or we had it um, maybe hosted in AWS or something but since this is just local it doesn't really matter that our passwords are pretty weak so just accept that so if we open this up we can see that we've got some databases and if you wanted to maybe create a table or something like that uh, since this is just a brand new database we've uh, spun up there's nothing in it so if we wanted to create a table we'd go into query tool here and then we just say you know create table and then open and close our round bracket and put in whatever we want so you might want an ID a name so on and then you can go and add data to it query it and do whatever else you want hope you find this video useful thank you for watching and have a good day